photograph that we've talked about before. Yes, now the male in the photograph is called Mbusia. Better still, Mbuyisa, Mbuyisa. And the little boy in his hands, my brother, my sister, was a 12-year-old, my brother, my sister, who was shot during the Soweto uprising in 1976 by name Hector Peterson. Now the lady is a 17-year-old, an elder sister of the little Hector Peterson, called Antoinette Peterson. My brother, my sister, this photo, in fact, is a symbol of apartheid. One of the symbols of atrocities right from the days of apartheid. This one took place in 1976 when two little children were gunned down by the useless apartheid South African police from the Orlando police station. They shot and killed a 12-year-old and a 15-year-old called Hastings. My brother, my sister, and Lovu. Hastings and Lovu. Today, we are talking about this man here, Sam Nzima. My brother, my sister, if you are ready. Sam Nzima was born on the eighth day of August in 1934. 40 solid years before Kwame, before Black Rasta was born. 40 solid years before Black Rasta was born. 30 solid years before Lucky Dube was born. He was born on the eighth day of August in 1934. And he died on the 12th day of May in 2018. My brother, my sister, our hero for today is Sam Masana Nzima. He was born in the town of Lilydale, in the Transvaal province of Mpumalang. Repeat after me, Mpumalang. Mpumalang. At the end of the class, I'm going to play you a song entitled Mpumalang. In fact, Mpumalang in South Africa is that beautiful place where you would find a South African game reserve. It's one of the biggest in the world and are some of the wild animals that you will never see anywhere in the world. Mpumalanga also has, in fact, mines. In fact, gold mines, diamond mines, and so on and so forth. It's a very rich part of South Africa. Mpumalanga. In fact, the indigenous South Africans born in Mpumalanga, they pronounce it Mpumalang. Mpumalanga. My brother, my sister, our hero for today, Sam Zima, was born in Pubalang. He was born on the eighth day of August in 1934. In fact, his father was a farmer. But at a very young age, when he attended school, his school teacher brought to the class a camera. And he taught the students how to use the camera. He was so interested in the camera. As you can see him here holding a camera, a Canon camera. He learned from his teacher, his primary school teacher, how to use a camera. And he showed so much interest in the camera. He would take photos. And in no time, he became so obsessed with the camera. And his school teacher kept teaching him. Oh, my God. He bought his own camera when he was still in school. But his father wanted him to be a farmer. He told him the land has been blessed by our ancestors. Plant the corn. Oh, plant potato. Oh, plant tobacco. Oh, plant papa. Oh, plant orange. Plant pear, avocado. The land is so blessed, anything can grow on it. He forced his son onto the farm. But in just about a few days, he was so bored and so tired. He had to run away from his own father because he didn't want to do any farm work. He ran away into the big city of Johannesburg. And when he got to Johannesburg, he enrolled into a school where he will be able to complete his education, specializing in camera works, my brother, my sister, and journalism. But when he was right there in Johannesburg, Joburg for short, he had to work to be able to make some extra money for himself. And he worked as a garden boy for a white man. Oh, my God. He made some money from there. 
Something could change. But look at what happened next. When he completed school, he got employment as a hotel receptionist. And whilst he worked there, he took pictures privately of people who came into the hotel with their permission. Then one day, a renowned photographer entered the hotel. My brother, my sister, this hotel was a hotel located right there inside the Johannesburg. And it was a hotel that was quite popular in the area. My brother, my sister, it was a hotel that so many people came to because it was a decent one, a hotel that had no history of negativity. This was where he worked. What was the name of the hotel? It was called Savi Hotel. S-A-V-O-Y Hotel. Savi Hotel. That was where he worked. He worked so diligently. And then he was poached to work in another hotel known as the Chelsea Hotel. Right there in Joburg. It was a bigger hotel. Whilst he was there, oh my God. He met a renowned photographer by the name Patrick Ricocho. Patrick Ricocho. Ricocho is spelled R-I-K-O-T-S-O. -O, Ricocho. Patrick Ricocho taught him some secrets of the camera. And he decided to move big time. He took pictures of the workers of the Chelsea Hotel. Portraits of them. He framed them and brought them. Everybody was talking about how beautiful those pictures were. One day he decided to have a bus trip. He traveled from one part of Joburg to another. And he took very beautiful pictures. He wrote about his journey. And then he added the beautiful photographs and sent them to a newspaper called The World. It was a black daily newspaper right there in South Africa. When they saw the pictures, oh, they loved the pictures. They loved the story. And then they invited him to be a photojournalist for the world newspaper. This was the first time he had heard something like that. He loved photography, but he never knew he would become a photojournalist. And that was how his journey began as a photojournalist. Today we are talking about Sam Zima. <laughs> My brother, my sister, then in 1968, he was invited to become full-time photojournalist, and he did. It was a dream come true. Whilst he was working for the world newspaper, he was on an assignment on the 16th of June in 1976 during the Soweto uprising. He was right on the spot. Oh, when police from the Orlando police station opened fire and started killing little children. That day they shot and killed two children. Hastings Ndolovu, 15, and Hector Peterson, 12 years. He had just celebrated his birthday one month earlier. My brother, my sister. And then when he saw the sick person, in fact, the fatally shot Hector Peterson, he took two quick photographs. This is one of the photographs, as you can see. And those of you who are not logged on to our Facebook page and other social media pages, you might not be able to see this. But this is the photographer. This is one of them. And this is the signature of Sam Nzima on it. My brother, my sister, show me the other photographer. You will see from the hands of this girl, you see that her hands are raised here. And look at the face of Umbuyisa. Now show me the other photographer, my brother, my sister. He took these quick photographs and sent them to the world. In fact, the world newspaper published it and it became one of the symbols of the atrocities of apartheid. The police explained that the 15 year old was inciting the people to throw stones and fight the police. That was why they shot him. Hector Peterson was carried by Mbuyisa all the way into the waiting vehicle of our photojournalist. My brother, my sister, Sam Nzima. This is his car. And he took this photograph as well. They put him in the car and took him to the hospital. When he arrived at the hospital, he was pronounced dead. The little 12-year-old boy 
have been shot dead. Two of them were shot and they died. But this one got all the prominence, all because of the photograph taken by our hero for today, Simon Zima. When the photograph came up, he was attacked by the white South African police. They tried to finish him up. He ran back into his city of birth, Lilydale, in Mpumalanga. And then he hid in the jungles. The police still found him, and then they put him under police surveillance. He stayed there until he died. My brother, my sister, he never, ever left. In fact, he went into a businesses. He even opened up the Enzima liquor store, as you can see here, where he sold liquor to many people. He also opened up a school, the Enzima School of Photography, my brother, my sister, where he taught photography to little children and also some other such people, teaching them all the tricks of the camera. My brother, my sister, for years, he fought to get the copyright of the legendary photograph he took of Hector Peterson and his sister Antoinette Peterson and of course the man carrying the little 12 year old to the hospital by name Mbujisa. He hid but whilst he was in, in hiding he was approached by powerful newspapers around the world to come and work with them as photojournalists, he refused for fear that the apartheid police might hunt him down and kill him. Today, my brother, my sister, this is the story of Sam Masana Zima. Today, we have the privilege to tell you the story of the story of stories. From this story, there's another story and yet another story. The story of Sam Nzima is one. Now the story of Hector Peterson is another. And then Hastings and Lovo. My brother, my sister, he was recognized in South Africa by several presidents. From Mandela all the way down to, oh my God, have mercy, Jacob Zuma. As you can see in this photograph, he became a hero. One of those who helped to bring the gory images of apartheid to the world. He fell ill and died on the 12th day of May in 2018. Today we remember you. He gained the copyright for his photographs before he died, having suffered and struggled for several years. The original newspaper known as The World was finally sold to the independent group. Time magazine regards Enzima's famous image as one of the hundred influential images of all time. He was buried here, my brother, my sister, and you can see his grave and also the photograph that he took. And on the grave, you can read, the legend has fallen, the hero has fallen, but the legacy lives on. You brought hope into the world. May your soul rest in power. This is the photograph of uh, ah, a very beautiful man's grave, his tomb. This is the grave of Sam Zima. Today, my brother, my sister, with tears in our eyes. Papa. Papa, why are you here? Papa. Them refer Papa, you need to Yeah, Papa, you need to Papa, me no go wante. Yeah, Papa. Papa, bye bye yo. Papa, we need to go wante. Papa, we need to go. Papa, we need to go. Papa, we need to go. Papa, me say me no go. Yeah, Papa. Yeah, Papa. Yeah, Papa. Papa, who are you wanting? Who are you wanting? Papa, who are you mean Oh, Papa. Papa. Yeah, Papa. <laughs> oh, Papa. Who are you mean call? Menu Bekawati. Menu Bekawati. Yeah, Papa. <laughs> He died, 
My brother, my sister, on the 12th day of May in 2018, at the age of 84, today we remember you, Papa. Uninyaminko, Papa Damrifadriye Wate, Papa Daye, Papa Daye. Tutu Bobby, Tutu Bobby.